Imagine waking up after weeks of dieting, only to find out you've lost more muscle than fat. Sound impossible? It's happening to tons of people right now, and I'm here to make sure it doesn't happen to you. They say you can't spot reduced fat, so why is it always your belly that shows up first and disappears last? What actually burns fat faster? Cardio or lifting weights? Is working out on an empty stomach better? And is there any lazy method that might work slowly but runs on autopilot? In today's video, I've pulled together the most common fat loss questions from all over the internet to break down how it really works and how you can burn fat in the fastest way possible so you're not wasting time, energy, or money on things like magic creams or fat melting belts. Once you understand everything, we'll build a plan that's smart, practical, and designed to deliver real results. So how does your body burn fat? When you eat less or move more, your body needs extra energy. That's when it turns to your fat stores and says, Time to use some of that stored fat. It sends signals to your fat cells, telling them to release energy. The fat breaks down, travels through your bloodstream, and gets used up to fuel your body. That's how fat burning works. That means to lose a significant amount of fat, you must push your body to use more energy. Simply put, fat burning really kicks in when you're tired, out of breath, and pushing through the discomfort. But that's where most people stop. They slow down just when it's starting to work. As a result, the body goes back to storing the food you just ate and the cycle repeats. Even months of running can show no results. Like I said, to tap into stored fat, you have to push your body to the point where it can't generate energy fast enough. And the longer you stay in that state of exhaustion, the more your fat burning compounds. Here's the crazy part. Every breath you're exhaling in that moment is literally burned fat. Yes, once fat is broken down and burned, it leaves your body as carbon dioxide through your lungs and as water through sweat, breath, and urine. But a word of caution, it might seem like a simple process, but more often than not, your body gets it wrong and starts burning muscle instead of fat. I'll explain that in a moment. But first, let's talk about why we don't lose fat from the places we actually want to. They say you can't spot reduced fat, so why is it always your belly that grows first and leaves last? The answer lies in how your body decides where to store and where to burn fat. It's not random. It's based on genetics, blood flow, and hormone sensitivity. We inherit our fat storing patterns from our parents. For men, fat tends to accumulate first in the belly and leave last. For most women, it's the hips, thighs, and lower belly that hold on the longest. But why the belly specifically? Because it has lower blood flow, which means fewer fat burning hormone signals actually reach it. And more importantly, the belly contains more alpha-2 receptors and fewer beta-2 receptors. These receptors act like gatekeepers. When fat burning hormones arrive and signal the need for energy, beta-2 receptors respond fast. They open the vault and release fuel. But alpha-2 receptors are stubborn. They say, hold on, we might need this later and keep the vault locked. That's why belly fat is so resistant, it's biologically programmed to hang on. But here's the good news. When I walk you through the exact method to burn fat, I'll also show you how to trick those stubborn alpha-2 receptors. Now, you might be thinking, can't I just target belly fat by doing abs workouts? Not exactly. When you train your abs, you're just strengthening the muscles underneath the fat. Your body still burns fat systemically from wherever it finds it easiest to access not necessarily where you want it to. So what burns fat faster, cardio or lifting weights? The answer is a bit more nuanced because both work in different ways. When you do cardio, your body needs quick real-time energy to match your activity level. That's why it reaches for glucose first, stored carbs and blood sugar, especially during high intensity workouts or running. Fat takes longer to break down and needs more oxygen to burn, which your body doesn't have enough of in those intense moments. Now you might be wondering, if cardio doesn't burn fat during the workout, then what's the point? Here's the truth. It absolutely does burn fat, but not instantly. Once you finish your cardio session, your body notices a big drop in glucose levels. That's when it kicks into recovery mode and triggers the afterburn effect. To restore balance, it starts aggressively burning fat, even while you're resting, sitting, or sleeping. Now, when it comes to weightlifting, the story's a little different. It's not primarily meant to burn fat, it's meant to protect your muscle from being burned during the fat loss process, especially after cardio. When you keep your muscles active, your body recognizes their value and holds onto them. But if you don't, your body sees them as unnecessary and starts breaking them down for energy. That's why it's so important to combine both cardio and strength training in the right balance, which I'll be sharing with you soon if you want to lose fat while keeping that clean, sculpted shape. And that's how you burn fat without losing muscle. 
So is it better to exercise on an empty stomach to burn fat faster? The short answer is yes, absolutely. When you work out fasted, especially first thing in the morning, your insulin levels are low, blood sugar is low, and glycogen stores are partially depleted. That means your body taps directly into its backup fuel source, fat. But here's the catch. It works best with low to moderate intensity workouts. Push too hard and your body may switch back to burning muscle or glucose instead. With weightlifting or high intensity interval training, working out on an empty stomach can actually backfire. You'll feel weak, lose performance, and in some cases even feel lightheaded, so it's not the best option for everyone. The smarter approach, eat something light, quick to digest, and energy boosting. Nothing heavy or calorie dense. Does sweating more mean you're burning more fat? The answer is no. Sweat is your body's cooling system, not your fat burning meter. When you exercise, your muscles generate heat and your body sweats to cool you down. Why does our weight drop after sweating? The reason is obvious. Sweat is literally water. When it leaves your body, it's just temporary weight loss. It goes back to the same level when you drink water again. One more problem people face when they try to lose fat without proper knowledge is that they complain they're constantly losing weight but can't see any difference in their fat. Trust me, these people should meet a professional trainer as soon as possible before they cause serious harm to themselves. These people have no idea what's happening in their body. They cut calories too hard, which leads to quick weight loss. But your body panics and burns muscle for energy. In this starvation state, your body tries to preserve fat even harder. The reason your body picks muscle instead of fat under stress is because these people skip strength training as well, and the body thinks muscles are useless. Also, muscles are metabolically expensive. When your body is starving, it says, let's get rid of muscle. It's expensive, and we're not lifting heavy things anyway. Fat, on the other hand, doesn't need oxygen or maintenance and stores energy for the future. This is why crash diets are such a terrible trap people fall for. You might be surprised, but just by breathing correctly, you can boost your fat burning ability by up to 20%. Why? Because fat burning is literally a process of oxidation. Your body burns fat using oxygen. So if your breathing is shallow or inefficient, your body's ability to burn fat drops significantly. That's why for the best performance during cardio, you need to follow these three breathing rules. Rule number one, breathe through your nose, not your mouth. Rule number two, breathe with your belly, not your chest. Rule number three, breathe slow and deep not fast and shallow, and most importantly, exhale more forcefully. Your body needs to clear out carbon dioxide first to make room for fresh oxygen. Now that you understand how fat burning actually works, this is the perfect time to build a weekly fat burning plan that's fast, highly efficient, and carefully designed to avoid all the traps and mistakes we've talked about so far. So there's nothing standing in your way. And right after that, I've got one more special routine for those who are either super lazy or just too busy with work. A plan that helps you burn fat almost completely on autopilot. So here's your first plan. The one designed for the fastest results. Start your week strong with a high intensity cardio session on Monday. This could be sprint intervals, fast cycling, or aggressive hill runs. Begin with 10 minutes of steady running to warm up, then go into 6 to 8 rounds of 1 minute sprints, each followed by a 90 second walk or slow jog. This combination rapidly drains your glycogen stores and forces your body to tap into deep fat burning mode. On Tuesday, go for a full body weight training session lasting around 45 to 60 minutes. Focus on heavy compound movements like squats, deadlifts, rows, and presses. Then, right after your workout, take a 20 minute slow walk. Since your glucose stores are already depleted from lifting, this walk allows your body to switch directly into fat burning mode, using oxygen and stored fat as fuel. Wednesday is your steady cardio day. Pick an activity like cycling, jogging, or a brisk walk on the treadmill. Keep it going for 45 to 60 minutes. Start at a normal pace, but in the last 15 to 20 minutes, slow it down without stopping, even if you're tired. That's the window when your body starts pulling energy directly from fat stores. On Thursday, give your body a break with active recovery. This isn't about burning calories. It's about restoring blood flow and improving oxygenation. Go for a light walk or an easy bike ride. Focus on relaxed, natural breathing and let your body reset without stress. Friday brings another weight training session. This time, focus on either your upper or lower body, depending on your workout split. And just like before, follow it up with a light cardio session, around 20 to 25 minutes. Saturday is your long duration cardio day. 
aim for 60 to 75 minutes of jogging, cycling, or brisk walking. The key here is the final stretch. In the last 30 minutes, even if your pace slows down, that's when most of the fat burning actually happens. Stick to slow, steady movement and natural breathing. At this point, your body is running on fat, not carbs. Sunday is your rest day. You can take full rest or go for a gentle 15 to 20 minute walk focused purely on recovery, deep breathing, and mental clarity. No pushing, no goals, just light movement if your body feels like it. Now, here's a crucial section, what to eat. If you get this right, you can double your fat loss results. First, eat high protein foods to protect your muscles and keep your metabolism high. Second, increase your fiber intake. It helps reduce cravings and improves digestion. Third, stay in a caloric deficit so your body burns fat as its primary fuel source. And don't forget to drink three to four liters of water every day. Now, one non-negotiable rule, avoid sugar and processed junk at all costs. Just five minutes of sugary indulgence can wipe out two days of clean effort. And finally, sleep. You must get at least seven to eight hours every night. No compromise. Without proper sleep, fat loss becomes almost impossible. Now let's talk about the people who are too busy with work or just not looking for fast results. This method runs almost entirely on autopilot. Instead of chasing fat loss through intense effort, we shift the way your entire system operates by updating your daily habits in three simple phases. Phase one, move lightly. Add gentle movement after every meal, just 10 to 15 minutes of walking. Take phone calls while walking. Do your own chores like cleaning, mopping, or light gardening and always choose stairs over elevators. These small actions don't tire you out, but they quietly keep your metabolism active throughout the day. Phase two, eat smartly, eat slowly, aim for at least 15 to 20 minutes per meal. Stop eating when you're about 80% full. Make sure there's some protein in every meal, and when possible, swap refined carbs for whole grains. Phase three, sleep deeply. Aim for a full night of restful sleep each night. Make sure your bedroom is cool, dark, and free from distractions. Now, here's the truth, this plan takes time. But the best part, it rewires your mindset. And once that happens, you'll never slip back into unhealthy patterns again.